Hi guys, I'm back. Welcome to 2022. I'm so excited to be back here with you on my YouTube channel and I have a lot of interesting, exciting things planned for you guys for this year. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you. And I thought that I would start the year by discussing how you can become a successful content writer based on my experience. Just reintroducing myself for those who may not know exactly what I do and for those who are watching a video on my channel for the first time. My name is Christine McLean and I am a content marketer, content strategist and a content writer who helps B2B brands increase their sales using both written and audiovisual content. Ooh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but that's basically what I do. And uh, over the past year, I have seen a lot of growth for my business and I'm really grateful for that. And I felt that it was important for me to share my insights from my experience over the past few years so that if you want to become a successful writer, you can do it too. Now, there are two things that I want to clarify before I go any further. The first is that it's not easy, guys. There's nothing about this journey that is easy. People think that all content writers do is just sit down in front of a computer and type up an article and send it off to a client or I don't even know what people think we really do but some people think that content writing isn't really a career is that something you can earn money from and all of those type of things but that's not true content writing can be a lucrative career if you know what you're doing and you know how to position yourself but again it's not easy you have to put in the work the other thing that I want to point out is my definition of success. I'm not earning a six-figure US dollar salary, so if that's what you're hoping to learn about from this video, I can't offer that to you. But what I can offer you is success in terms of gaining your freedom, so freedom to live life on your terms, freedom to earn far more than you were earning before because I'm currently earning five times what I earned when I was a teacher, which is a tremendous feat for me. And freedom to, to know that you are in control of your business, you are in control of making money, you're in control of, you're in control of how much you can earn and the, the sky is the limit type of thing. So success for me is really those three things. And again, if you're looking for the solution to get a six figure income, that's not what I'm providing here. I'm just providing you my insights based on what I have experienced so far. So I hope this video will help you out. And I have an article that you can check out that explains all of the points that I'm describing in this video in detail. I'm going to include the article in the description box below and in the first comment, okay? So check out the article and let's dive into the first tip. My first tip is to think like a business owner because you are one. You're not just a freelancer, you are a business owner. You own a bona fide business, my friend. So what does that mean? Let me break this down into about three or four parts. First, you have to formalize your business. And formalizing your business means that you register the business, you file your taxes, you hire an accountant. An accountant should be the very first person you hire from day one, trust me. And you ensure that you keep on top of your money. And when I say keep on top of your money, that leads to the second part of this. You have to manage your finances as you would manage the finances of a business. What that means is you have to pay attention to your cash flow more than your profit, because profit is good, yes, but cash flow is what ultimately matters. You hear, you hear the phrase cash is king? Cash is king because the more cash you have, the better your, your chances of success, the more opportunities you can attract. So what does cash flow mean? 
cash flow speaks to how money flows into and out of your organization. So you have to keep tabs on the amount of money that you're spending on a weekly and a monthly basis. As a content writer, you're going to be spending money on software subscriptions, you're going to be spending money on your utilities, and you may have some other miscellaneous expenses that are unique to you. But remember, these expenses must be business-related expenses. So look at, look at what those expenses are on a week-by-week -week and a month-by-month -month basis so that you know when certain things are due, how much is being paid, and how the cash is moving out of your business on a monthly basis. Oh, and I forgot one more expense that a lot of people have, which is rent. So don't forget your rent too. But the specifics of rent and how it's deducted for a business will differ from one country to the next. For some countries, it's very specific to square footage in the house and stuff like that. So yeah, but don't know all of your expenses, basically is what I'm saying. Know all of your expenses on a weekly, monthly basis know how that money is coming out of your organization, how much is coming out and when it's coming out. Then you need to look at the money coming in. A lot of times as a freelancer, you will be focused on getting money in to cover your expenses. That's basically your objective. You're covering your expenses and just trying to make ends meet. That mentality will stunt your growth, will prevent you from growing. You need to ensure that you have cash flow that allows you to not only break even but have more money that you can reinvest in your business and that you can use to expand your personal investments stuff like that so when i say look at the money coming into your business don't just focus on one client don't put all your eggs in one basket you need to find ways to attract multiple clients who can pay you at the rate that you deserve. That's very important. So it would, it's good to have at least four consistent clients on a monthly basis. So I say something happens to one of them, you still have the others there that can bring the money in. All right, so focus on improving your money coming in by having a wider selection of clients who can pay you what you deserve and also ensure that you're not just trying to break even you're actually trying to get more money that you can reinvest in your business develop your brand and invest for your future and the next part i'm still in the business mindset tip still in that tip because it's a very very important tip that's why it's so long but the next part of this I spoke about the, the structure of your business, so formalizing your business, and then thinking about the cash flow for your business. The next thing is thinking about how you can scale your business. I had a conversation with Jay Klaus last year about creating a scalable freelance business that you can check out here. But basically what you're trying to do with a scalable freelance business is find ways for you to not have to be working in the business all the time. You're trying to find ways to earn passive income that is sustainable, or you're going to build an agency where you hire people to do the work, whatever it is, but you're trying to create something that goes beyond you having to be in the business all the time and that can grow beyond you. All right, so that's another aspect of developing that business mindset that you need to think about. Now I'm going to move into the next tip, but just to summarize what I just said, you need to ensure that your business is formalized, so register the business, file your taxes, hire an accountant. You need to also ensure that you're managing the cash flow of your business properly, so know the cash that is going out as the cash that's coming in on a weekly and monthly basis. And third thing, learn how to create a scalable business all right so let's move into the next tip my next tip is for you to figure out your niche and this is a tip that you'll hear a lot of experienced content writers tell you because it actually works the more niche down you are is the more you can charge higher rates here's what i mean 
You're a content writer, yes, but that doesn't mean that you should market yourself just as a content writer. You're a content writer for what industry, for what, what category, you know? If you're a content writer who focuses on finance brands, for instance, you would brand yourself as a finance content writer. If you're a content writer for SaaS companies, you would brand yourself as a SaaS content writer, so on and so forth. I focus on B2B companies. So I brand myself as a B2B content writer or a B2B content marketer. So my suggestion to you is to niche down, be as niche specific as possible. And the more niche specific you are, is the more you'll be seen as a specialist. And being seen as a specialist is what will help you to charge higher rates. Again, if you want to learn more about these points that I'm describing in this video, you can check out the article that I have. And it's great. the link to the article is going to be in the description box and in the first comment below. So check it out. The next point is directly related to what I just described. So niching down is important, specifically because you can charge higher rates, but at the same time, you need to price based on your experience. There is a post that I saw late last year by one of the marketing leaders I follow, and she was saying that she charges a thousand US dollars for a 1,000 word article. So that's basically one dollar per word. And I was like, that's a lot of money <laughs> to be charging for an article. But she can charge that rate because of her experience, because she's able to show that she can deliver results. She is published all over the place. She has a reputation, so she can charge that. But you as a newbie, if you're a newbie or somebody who is less experienced, you can't be charging a thousand dollars for a 1000 word article. That's ridiculous. You have to charge based on your experience level. I would suggest starting at 10 cents per word, which would work out to $100 per 1,000 word article. That can be a starting point, and then as you grow, as you build a reputation, as you show that you can deliver results, then you can start increasing your rates. So that's what my suggestion to you would be from a rate perspective. I discuss this whole pricing perspective a bit more in the article, so remember to check that out. Tip number four is to establish strong business processes. I realized last year that there were some gaps, some holes in my business processes and I'm working to correct those issues. But you need to have a business process for onboarding clients, for managing projects, for receiving payments, for closing out contracts. I can't go through everything right now because it would make the video way, way, way too long, but you can check out the article. What I want to point out as a tip here is, well, it's actually two things. First, you always need to have a contract. Remember to always have a contract and ensure that you and the client sign the contract. You can use DocuSign, HelloSign, SignWell, one of those electronic document signing software tools to get the contract signed. Very, very important. And the contract protects both you and the client, all right? The next thing that you need to ensure is that you have a payment structure so the client knows when payment should be released and you also, if you're in a developing country like I am, you also know how you're going to get the money. I can't use PayPal, <laughs> I have to use Payoneer, right? And, and so far Payoneer has been working well you know, for most of my clients. For those clients that I can't use Payoneer with, I use an international bank transfer and that works well also. But you have to figure out what works best for your business. How are you going to get the money? What is the payment schedule you're going to be like? I made that very clear to the client so that there's no miscommunication or any issues related to the whole payment experience. Again, there are different levels to this business process consideration, so please read the article. I can't go into everything here because it will make the video too long, but remember that you need to have strong business processes. Onboarding, getting payments, managing the project, and offboarding the client. 
We're halfway through, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate you. Appreciate, appreciate, love you. <laughs> this is a brand new 2022. Of course, it's a brand new 2022. There's never been another 2022. But yes, <laughs> it's a brand new year. <laughs> and I'm glad to have you here. I just rhymed. Hey. Anyways, so we're at the fifth point, And the fifth point is to learn through experience. I believe a lot in experiential, experiential learning <laughs> where I actually try things that I am learning about content, writing about content, marketing about content strategy. I try them myself to see if they actually work and how they work, how I can make them work best. And I also ensure that I can try these things before I offer them as services to clients. So that's very important. Don't just take things, just don't just think that because you read an article, oh, you're an expert in, in something. No, actually try it. Actually spend some time doing the work to understand what you're doing. And then you can start saying, okay, I understand this. I've actually been able to achieve results from this and I can now sell this as a service. Now with trying, it means that you're going to have to have a website. You're going to need a website. I know that as a content writer, you may think that it's just enough to have your LinkedIn profile, Twitter profile, whatever it is. But having a website gives you a training ground to try things out. That's the biggest benefit of a website. And you can get websites for a, a low cost on platforms like WordPress and Squarespace and stuff like that. So get our website, try things out for yourself and see how everything comes together, how everything fits so that you can hone your skills and offer better services to your clients. Now this tip is near and dear to my heart, very near and dear to my heart because it's something that I struggle with. And I won't lie to you, it's something that I still struggle with from time to time. But stop comparing yourself to others and focus on trying new things and having new experiences. Focus on what you, you right there, can offer to your clients. Focus on what you can bring, the value that you can bring, and don't watch everybody else. Yes, it's important to learn from other people and to, to get inspiration from other people, but don't think that because others are thriving, you should hide. And when I say try new things as well, step out of your comfort zone. Maybe you're not much of a video person. I'm not much of a video person either, but here I am trying to create a YouTube channel, trying to do videos. I'm not a person who really likes to go out on adventures and stuff like that. I'm more of a homebody, but I'm, I'm going to go out and do some interesting things this year because I need to have experiences. I need to enjoy life. But yeah, just don't be afraid to try new things, have new experiences and not compare yourself to others. Everybody has their own lane and there are people who will like you and be attracted to you. Focus on, on those clients, focus on those people and don't try to be like everybody else. Be you, be yourself, be authentic. This tip is a big one, like really, really big because this is how I was able to transition from a freelancing platform to actually building a solid career as a content writer, content marketer, content strategist. Trust me, big, big, big. You need to build relationships on social media. Now, I'm not talking about going out there and having a sales pitch party. Going to everybody on LinkedIn and, and trying to sell them on your services and just connecting with people just to sell, 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 sell. No, talking about actually engaging with other people's content Purchasing their stuff, like actually spending your own money and purchasing their courses, their books, whatever it is that they're selling. Getting to know them a bit more through their content. Having conversations with them on their posts in the comment section. 
actually getting to know people, reaching out to them to share what you're learning from actually following them and purchasing their content and engaging with their content. And once you reach out to them to share what you're learning and to share what you love most about following them and getting to know them, you can see where the conversation goes. Sometimes the conversation will end abruptly and you know the person just says thanks or whatever, whatever but you've opened the line of communication and you're more likely to make a connection with the person on LinkedIn or whatever social media platform you use and through making that connection and opening that conversation the person may reach out to you again when he or she has a need so build relationships and know <clears throat> so build relationships and know that relationship building is a long-term strategy is not an instantaneous thing but it's the strategy that can lead to the best rewards the best results so build relationships complete courses that help you to upgrade your skills because you know you have to level up was it shakira or no it's not shakira what a girl the name? Hmm? Yeah, what's your name? Sierra. Sierra. Yeah, you know Sierra sings level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Hey. Level up. Don't ask about my dancing skills. To just to ask. Anyways, so um, if you want to level up, you have to learn more and not only learn but apply what you're learning. So I encourage you to complete courses. Don't just enroll in them and then after a while you abandon them. Complete courses. Last year I completed two courses. I completed the Digital Marketing Institute's Certified Digital Marketing Professional. It's a mouthful. I can never remember the exact order of the words. But I'm a Certified Digital Marketing Professional from the... the hmm. I'm a certified digital marketing professional from the Digital Marketing Institute. There, that's right. And I also completed Erin Balsa's research report playbook course, which is very good. You should check it out. I'll include the links to both courses in the description box below. But always be striving to learn something new. You never know everything. And content marketing is a is an industry or is a niche that is constantly changing so you need to be up to date with what's happening i plan to enroll in more courses this year and to continue learning and growing so i hope you do too we're almost there two more points and that's it <laughs> so my second to last point is that you need to follow thought leaders on linkedin so LinkedIn content writers who are more experienced at you, than you, who are at another level than you, who you can learn from, because these people share insights in their posts for free. They share, they share knowledge in their posts for free. And you can learn a lot by just following them and reading their posts and interacting with the comments that are made on their posts. Trust me, LinkedIn is a big training ground. You can learn so much there. But it's up to you to find the content writers, the content marketers who you admire and who you would want to follow and take it from there. All right. But follow the thought leaders and learn from them. We're at the end, guys. Drum roll. So the final point is to keep building and growing, even if that means letting go of some clients. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, that's that's the real deal, guys. As you grow as a content writer, you're going to realize that there's some things you just gotta say ba 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 to, really. And these are not things that you will know when you're just starting out. It's as you build and grow and learn more about what you can do, what you can't do, what you can offer the value that you can bring and how, how you can best bring that value, you realize that there are certain things that need to be cut off. That may, that may mean letting go of some clients 
who we just can't work with anymore because there are some of those and it could also mean that you discard some of the services that you previously offered all right as you revamp and you try to build your business and your brand in a more sustainable way so don't be afraid to cut off the services that no longer serve you don't be afraid to cut off not cut off cut off is a strong word but um or a strong phrase but don't be afraid to let go of clients who you, you can't work with anymore because your business is not growing in that direction so and when you're letting go of the client you're not just going to say hey i'm just cutting you off no you're not saying that you're just kindly thanking them for everything that they have done for you sharing your appreciation for them and then just letting them know that you're you think it's time for another phase in your journey and you move on so those are my 10 tips i hope you learned something from them i know that some of them were a mouthful but i hope you learned something i would love to hear from you what did you learn what has your experience been like as a content writer and i hope to see you in the next video that's basically it so leave a comment letting me know what you've learned from this video and what your experience has been like as a content writer i'd love to hear from you and i would love for you to subscribe like this video share this video subscribe so that you can see even more content from me looking forward to seeing you in the next video or to chatting with you in the comments below and have a fantastic week bye